and I'm going to start Luke 15 and 11. This is the prodigal son. So this is the prodigal son. He said, a certain man had two sons. He says, the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. When he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Now, I'm going to teach you something that maybe you've never heard before. I'm going to spell it out for you because it's kind of a long word. It's called a ket satsa. Q-E-T-S-A-T-S-A-H. The Ketsa. It's the Ketsa ceremony. Listen. This is a Jewish tradition that always happened to the Jewish son when these circumstances manifested. When a Jewish son lost or spent or had his inheritance taken by a Gentile, they had to do this ceremony called the Ketsatsa ceremony. This is what they do. After you lost all your inheritance and you came back home to your family, the village was waiting for you. I said the village was waiting for you. Amen. What they did, all the villagers brought a large earthenware jar, a big jar filled with burned nuts and corn, a big jar filled with burned nuts and corn. The villagers then brought this big jar over to you and broke the jar in front of you. Are y'all with me? Amen. This is called the Quetzalcoatl ceremony. When they broke the jar in front of you with the burned nuts and corn, the people shouted, so-and-so, whatever his name is, is cut off from his people. Then the villagers and the people his and his family had nothing else to do with him for the rest of his life. He was cut off because he let the Gentiles take his inheritance from him. This is called the Quetzasa ceremony. But if you look through Luke 15, you don't see no Quetzasa ceremony in this thing with the prodigal son. The father just ran out, met him, killed a fatty calf for him, right? And they had a big party. Amen. I'm here to preach to you what should have happened to the younger son was the Quetzasa ceremony. They should have broke the jar with the stuff in front of him, excommunicated him, and put him out of the village. But it didn't happen. You want to know why it didn't happen and it should have happened? Because God changes the times and the seasons. God showed up and made it so that the younger son didn't get what he deserved. Have you ever been in a situation and it looked like you should have got something bad and you didn't? Amen. Have you ever been in a situation Amen. where you didn't get what you deserve to get? Oh, y'all have been praying with me. I'm here to preach. You all might not be Jewish, but everybody here had a quick sasa ceremony that you should have had done to you because of something that you did that you shouldn't have done or I did that I shouldn't have done. I'm here to preach to you. God kept the quick sasa away from you. God kept the judgment away from you. You didn't go through the Quetzalcoatl ceremony. Why? Because God has changed your time and your season. Now, I'm here to let you know that things might not be looking so good for you right now, but God sent me to preach to you. He's in the process right now of changing the times and the seasons in your life. When you get justice, you get what you deserve. When you get mercy, you don't get what you deserve. When you get grace, you get what you don't deserve. Let me say that again. I said when you get justice, you get what you deserve. When you get mercy, 
you don't get what you deserve. But when you get grace, you get what you don't deserve. So, the younger son should have got the Quetzalcoatl ceremony. He should have been put out the village. But he didn't get what he should have got because God was in the process of coming down and changing his time and his season. His daddy should have met him when, as soon as he saw him coming, instead of running towards him, his daddy should have met him and said, up, oh, son's back. They should, they should have run and got that big jar. That's right. Oh, y'all ain't pray. <laughs> they should have run and got that big jar, broke it in front of him, and excommunicated him in front of everybody. I'm letting you know that God has stayed the hand of the enemy. I said God has stayed the hand of the enemy to keep things from happening to you that could have happened to you because God changes the times and the... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't it wonderful that the car wreck that should have hit you didn't hit you? Yeah. Come on, Thank you, Lord. Come on, glory to God. Isn't it wonderful that the, that the disease that should have hit you didn't hit you? Isn't it wonderful that the cancer that should have hit you, yes, thank you Lord. Hallelujah. didn't hit you yet? You know why? Hallelujah. Because God changed it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Right now, while I'm here in front of you, y'all didn't even know it, but God's changing yes. the times yes. and the seasons Praise in your life right now. Why? Because yes. He's God. I said he's busy and you can't even see it changing the times and the seasons in your life so you don't get the quick sasa. Well, I'm tell you, I'm not no Jew. I don't get a quick sasa, but oh, you had a quick sasa coming. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We did some stuff. Yes, yes. Do you remember your pre saved life? Ain't nobody said preach the Culver. Let me say it again. Do you remember some of the stuff you did before the blood hit you? Yeah, there we go. Somebody one of the guys said, help, help us, Lord. Do you remember some of the stuff? Do you remember some of the places you were in? Yeah. And some of the stuff you did? Some of us deserve three or four quat sa sa ceremonies. Ain't nobody praying with me? Hallelujah, but they didn't hit because once the blood hit you, God changed the times. Are y'all learning something? I don't know about you, but that should have made somebody happy. That God changes, and it says he changes the times and the seasons. That means he's always doing it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. A change in your time and season may hit you before you can get to your car. Yeah. A change in your time and your season may hit you right when you're putting, your, putting the key in your door to get in your house. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Somebody say, he changes, he changes. my times yeah. and my season. Yeah. Woo, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the beauty is he's changing it right now. How do you know that I'm Because I just read to you Daniel 2.21. And Daniel 21 says he changes the times and the seasons. And the fact that he changes the times and the seasons, and he's God, and he doesn't change. The Bible says that those times and those seasons could not be his will, or else he wouldn't change them. Are y'all getting something? So those bad times and those bad seasons that aren't God's will, he steps in and changes him, changes them. Are y'all learning something? So the principle that I'm really trying to show that are very simple is God wouldn't change something if it wasn't if it was his will to begin with. Why would God change something that wasn't his will? I'm going to read <coughs> Numbers 23:19 in the NIV. Show you what I'm saying. 23:19 Numbers NIV. God is not human that he should lie, 
that he should change his mind. Wait a minute. The NIV in Numbers 23, 19 says he's not human that he should change his mind. Are y'all learning something? Yeah. So if in Daniel 2, 21, if it was his will for those times and seasons to be there, he would, and he changes it, that means he's changed his mind. Are y'all learning something? But the Bible says right here, he don't lie. He doesn't change his mind. Why? Because he changes not. Does he speak and not do what he said? Does he promise and not make it good? Let me go back. It said he's not human that he should lie, that he should change his mind. Isn't that one? See, we're the ones that change our mind. Right. Oh, ain't nobody, ain't nobody. Right. See, we'll change our mind in a minute. But isn't it wonderful that God don't operate like that? So I'm giving you biblical principles to show you if he's changing something that wasn't his will. Amen? If he's changing your times and your seasons, those times and seasons for you weren't his times and seasons for you. I don't know about you, but if I were you, I'd give God a praise. I said, I don't know about you, but I, if I were you, I'd give God a praise because he's watching all the time. Can I teach you? God's watching what you're going through. God's watching your struggle. God's watching things, the fact that you feel like giving up. God's watching some scenarios where you feel like God doesn't love you anymore. But I believe that God sent me to preach to you on this morning to restore that confidence and have me show you scriptures for you to see he's changing your times and your seasons. Hallelujah. See, yes. see, winter don't last all way. Let me tell you. Amen. I said winter time doesn't last all way Amen. because seasons change. What the devil tries to tell you is that seasons don't change. But seasons, turn to your neighbor and say seasons, seasons. change. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Praise I said, isn't that wonderful? Yes. I'm here to prove to you that seasons change Hallelujah. because you don't get 10 degree weather in the summertime. Oh, yeah, but didn't nobody get that. <laughs> I said, I'm here to prove to you that seasons change and that's why you don't have icicles and snow in the summertime. At least not most of the time. Hallelujah. Why? Because God's changed that season. You've gone from, you've gone from spring to summer. I'm here to speak a word to all of you here today under the sound of my voice. Turn to your neighbor and say, summer, summer. is coming. Is uh, shut up. I'm not just talking about summer, June, July. I'm talking about summer in your life is coming. I said summer in your life is coming. The sun's about to come up in your life because God changes the times and the season. Isn't it wonderful? And the Bible don't say when it's going to happen. But what it says, he changes. That's the present policy. Well, that means he always do it. So you never know when you're going to get the manifestation of a change the season. Isn't that wonderful? You can walk into the change on the way going out the door. Wait a minute. A change season could show up in your bank account. I feel my preacher coming. I said a change season could show up at Chase National Bank for you. Somebody how a change. See, isn't that wonderful? And I, and I showed you scriptures to prove it. Hallelujah. He changes. Oh, I feel my preacher. He changes your times and your season. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Know what that means? That means bad times don't last always. Yeah. That means that if your leg hurt, oh, I feel my your leg ain't going to hurt always because he changes your time and your season. Thank you, Lord. 
Woo! And, but the main point I'm trying to make to you on this morning is the only reason he changes the, those times and those seasons in Daniel 2.21 is because they weren't his times and seasons in the first place. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I showed you I showed you scriptures to prove it. He don't change. So why would he change his mind and change your times and your seasons if your times and your seasons were his will? Amen. He's getting involved to change times and seasons to what he wants to happen for you. Are y'all getting anything? Yeah, amen. And the beauty of this type of message is it could happen, it could manifest. At any time. Change season could show up, like I mentioned, in your bank account. Wait a minute. Change season can show up and affect your boss that ain't so nice. Amen. Ain't nobody praying. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Change. Oh, yes, I hear you talking to the Holy Ghost. Change season could show up in your tax refund. Somebody holler a changed, a changed. Season. season. Huh? People may be in a carnal season, but then God changes. Oh, ain't nobody praying with me. But then God changed the times and the season, and a car just show up. Ain't nobody praying with me. And I'll tell you, why would a car just show up out the blue? Because he's changed. Your season. Thank you, Lord. Shande Sabah. Oh, hallelujah. Sickness in your body. Stuff going on that you don't like. Don't feel so good. But I'm here to preach to you. He changes the times and the seasons in your body. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Isn't it nice to know? That the Quetzasa ceremony that you should have under, undergone, you didn't undergo it? Amen. In the spirit? Amen. Isn't it good that they didn't bring that big jar all full of nuts and stuff and break Amen. it in front of you and put you out? Isn't that it? Because that's what the prodigal son deserved. He should have been excommunicated from his, vis from his village, but the, but the father didn't do it. You know why? Because God changed the times oh, and the... Oh, ain't nobody praying with me. So I just showed up here for a minute to let you know you're in the middle of a season change. Huh? Huh? Maybe you don't have a whole lot of friends, but God's in the middle of changing. I said, maybe you don't have as many friends as you'd like to have, but God changes the times and the season. Right. Maybe you're in a situation where you've been suffering through something. But God sent me to preach to you on this morning that he's changing it. Thank you, Lord. Well, I said, how do you know he's changing it? Because Daniel 2.21 says something. Amen. It says he changes the times and the season. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me, but you're about to experience a change of season. You're about to experience the positive things in your life because Daniel just said he changes the times and the season. That's one of the good things about you, about the fact that you're smart enough to let the blood hit you. The Bible says that we are peculiar people. Yeah, it says we are peculiar people, doesn't it? We laugh, ain't nothing funny. We run, ain't nobody chasing. Oh, ain't, ain't nobody playing. We holler, didn't nobody hit us. Come on, somebody. You know why we do that? Because we are peculiar people. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Because God has his hand on us. Oh, hallelujah. We act differently than the unsaved folk do. Hmm? Turn to your neighbor and say, he changes the times and the season. Think about stuff that you've been going through. Think about, sister, some stuff that brought tears to your eyes. I'm here to preach. He's changing it. Praise the Lord. Whatever. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I hear you talking to me, Holy Ghost. I just heard. And each change of time and season is specific to where you are. Yes, Lord. 
Wait, wait, wait. See, I don't get your change time and season. I get my change time and season because God's got the change time and season specific for where you are. Right. Are y'all getting this? Amen. So God changes your time and your season in accordance with where you are. Are y'all learning something? Right. See, because some, some person, some people might not need a car because they got five. Right. But then the but then the person who needs the car, he changes that person's time and season because they need a car and a car show up. Are y'all learning something? Right. And what I want to make sure that you understand when I'm closing is that you didn't get what you should have got. Wait a minute. I said you didn't get the judgment or I didn't get the judgment that we didn't get the stuff to happen to us that we deserve to happen to us particularly before we got saved. The devil could have killed us. You got to wait, wait, yeah. yeah. The devil could have killed us and we would have gone to a devil's hell right. before the blood hit us. But you want to know why that didn't happen? It's because he changes the times and the seasons in your life. Because all things work together for good. Yeah. To them who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. I said hallelujah. Yeah. He changes the times and the seasons. Daniel 2.21 says, he changeth the times and the seasons. So that means when you're in a bad season, the devil tries to make you think it's going to stay that way, but Daniel's scripture proves to you that God's about to change it. It's not going to stay bad always. The old adage says, trouble don't last Always. Amen. And the troubles that don't last always scripture is Daniel 221. <laughs> he changes your time and your season. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah.